Uh, okay, in this video we're going to go over arrays in a little bit more detail, uh, JavaScript arrays. Um, we've talked about, here, here I've defined an array of items, these are fruits. So I use the let ver uh, declaration to create a variable called fruits, and we set that equal to a array literal. This array um, consists of string literals as items, right? So we know the basic uh, operations we can do to an array. We can console.log and we can access one of the items with um, reference by index. So we do that with square brackets and pass in the index, right? So if I pass in the index one, we know indexing starts at zero, so that's zero index one index, two index, and three index. So the index three is the largest item that we could access there, right? And in this case, we're using reference by index with the index one, so that's gonna be zero, one, so this should be bananas, right? We also know that we can print out the length. We can get the length of an array. So dot log uh, fruits dot length, right? So these are the common operations we, we all know very well. So we can go uh, to the desktop here where I have this file and I'm going to run this. This is uh, array basic ops. Okay, so sure enough, we see bananas and we see that our array is of length four. So there's some additional things that we can do with arrays um, that are important to talk about. So simple adding and removing. This is important for uh, any kind of uh, operation um, for, m with an array at some point you're going to need to add items or remove items right here we've specified everything uh, as a literal but generally speaking um, you're going to need for example your user will want to add items to an array or you want to remove certain things okay so to do that we use a few basic methods the most common of which are attached to the array object itself, right? So we have array.push, which adds an item to the end of the array, okay? And then array.pop, which removes an item, okay? Uh, so when you pop an item from the, uh, li the list, whatever item you pop is returned, okay? So let's take a look at this one first. We'll, uh, we have let popped item is going to equal fruits dot pop okay and we're gonna see that we can console.log this and remember pop works at the end of the list so this variable then should be dates right so we're gonna log that out popped item but then this also pop also modifies the list right so fruits is our list so we call dot pop on this list so that means the last item not only is it returned in this variable but it's also removed from the list so we can say console.log and look at the list fruits again and you know we can also console.log get the length right so this is the pop function We'll comment that out and we'll move on to push next. So pop, remember, removes from the end of the list. Okay, so this is the pop function. We see we removed um, dates, and so that was at the end, right? And then our new length of our uh, array is three. And let's actually up here, let's go ahead and print out the original array just so we're all on the same page of, of what that array is, so fruits. Okay, so here this is the original list. These are the accessing items by index, the length, and pop. Right? So now let's uh, talk about adding an item to the list. And just like pop, this operates at the end of a list, push operates at the end of the list, but you're pushing an item onto the list instead. Okay, so here, comment this out. Array, whatever array you're talking about, in this case we're gonna use fruits, fruits.push, and then you put the item that you would like to be added to the end of the list. Okay, and this does return a value. It returns the length of the new list. Uh, most often, you'll just ignore this. You don't need to use this, uh, but you do have access to that if you want. So here we could say let um, new length is equal to uh, fruits dot push, and let's say uh, what do we want to add to our list? So we remove dates, right? So let's add something else. Dragon fruits, I guess. OK, 
Okay, so we've got this new length. So now we're going to print out uh, console.log, I mean. We want to log uh, first list. Right? And then we want to console.log the return value, right? So the new length. Okay, so the length was three. We added an item. So now this length should be four. So we should see new length here as four. There we go. Now we can run this. Okay, so here's a new list, and we see dragon fruits is added to the end, right? So push and pop operate on the end of a list. You can push items to the end, or you can pop them from the end, all right? <clears throat> and then uh, also here we see that the length has changed to four, okay? So more often than not, you're not going to save this in a variable, but you can. Um, usually you'll see just that. All right, so that's push and pop. So it's nice that we have a way to add things uh, to a list uh, and remove them. But just being able to do that at the end of the list isn't helpful, right? We might want to do some other things. So there's a set of methods that will allow you to um, add and remove from the beginning of the list. So just like push and pop, you have shift and unshift. OK, um, so shift uh, removes an item from the beginning of the array, the array, and returns it. So, so shift is just like uh, pop, right? So pop removes an item. Shift is just like that. It removes an item from the beginning, OK? And I'll give you a little trick to help you remember um, <clears throat> which one is which. But first, let's do the example, OK? So our list up here at the top has uh, apricots, and we're going to um, shift that off of the list, OK? so. Say let shifted item equal fruits uh, shift. Okay, so then we're going to uh, console.log fruits and we're going to console.log the shifted item. run this and so here was our list beforehand and we popped off apricots right so what if we want to add something to the beginning of the list okay so unshift so just like push and pop they both do operate on the end of a list shift and unshift uh, operate on the beginning of the list okay so adds an item to the beginning of the array returning the new length all right, um, so let's basically do the same thing here. We're going to say let um, new length. So we've already declared new length up here once with let. So if I try to declare it again, um, I'm going to get an error. OK, and we see uh, I have a linter set up that says new length has already been declared, right? So I've already declared it once. Since it's let, I can just change the value. But I can't declare it again. All right, so I've already declared it up here. So I'll just change the value to fruits.unshift. And so we removed apricots. So let's add apples. And then we're going to console.log the list. And then console.log the new length. So we can run this. And sure enough, our list now have has apples at the beginning. Right? And then here is our new length after the unshift occurred. All right, so we have um, pop and push, and then we have uh, shift and unshift. Okay, so uh, the trick that I use to remember this, pop and push are a little bit easier to remember. You're popping something off of the list, and the other one is you're pushing it onto the list. Those seem a little bit more obvious. Um, but pop is a shorter word, right? And you're removing something. Okay, so shift is the shorter of the two words. 
than unshift, and so that means you're removing something. Unshift is the longer version, right? So that means you're adding something. Push is longer than pop, right? So that means you're adding something. It's longer, right? This is shorter, so you're removing something. So that's sort of what I do. Shift and unshift obviously go together, and push and pop obviously go together. But whichever one is the shortest is the one that removes items, and whichever one is the longest is the one that um, adds items. Okay, so that's sort of how I remember it. So hopefully that can help you. All right. So uh, that's nice. We can add and remove things from the beginning and the end of the list. But you know, we might obviously need to add items in the middle of a list or um, remove items in the middle of the list. So there's actually one function that's uh, somewhat complicated in JavaScript. Uh, it's called splice. And basically the way splice works is you uh, pass in an index of where you want to start the operation, how many items would you like to remove, and then any items that you want to add. And you can add as many items as you want. OK, so this is a little complicated, so let's take a look at this. So. Um, we're gonna uh, so this the return value here also is important. So however many items you specify here, number to remove, an array of all of those items is is the return value. So we'll say let removed items okay equal, and we have fruits dot splice. Now there's an L. Okay, it's it's uh, or a p in here and then splice. It's not slice, which is a separate function we're going to talk about next. So splice uh, allows you to add and subtract items in the middle of a list or, or wherever in the list really. Okay, so first you have to specify an index. So let's let's look uh, back here. We were at um, this list here. Let's say we wanted to remove cantaloupes. So that's index zero, one, and two. Okay, so we can uh, we can start at index two and just remove one item. All right, that's something we could do. And then console.log, let's print out our list of fruits. And then console.log are removed items. Right. OK, so we see it removed cantaloupes. Right? But we could also uh, add an item in here too. So let's say I wanted to add cranberries. There. Okay, so I'm starting at index two. I'm removing one item. That should be cantaloupe, and that's going to be in a list. This, the removed items is a list of items, even though I'm just removing one, because I could remove a bunch. So this is going to be a list, and I, I could theoretically not remove any as well. Right, so we'll see that here in a second. But first, I'm removing one, so that's going to put cantaloupe in the in the removed items, uh, and then I'm going to add to our list cranberries. So all of these operations are modifying our original list fruits. Okay, so here we see cranberries has taken the place of cantaloupes, right? And then the removed items are listed here. Right. So I could say um, let's start out by not removing any items. Okay, so we're going to start at index two. I'm not going to remove any items. So we're going to keep cantaloupe in there, and then I'm going to add cranberries. Okay, and we'll see what the result is here. So cranberries now, since we were at index two, that gets injected at index two. So any items I specify here um, are, are going to be to be added at this position, right? All right, so we'll just toss in something else like pears, some other fruit. Okay. Now uh, this is just how Node works. It's changed how it's printing things out because the array reached a certain length, and so now it's printing the items out one at a time. But this is still just the same thing. It's an array. And see, cranberries is at index two. And each of the items that I add are added starting from index two. So cranberries is at index two. Pairs would be one more than that. And if I had any other items, they would just follow in a row after that. OK, so this is, this is uh, the index is the position of the new item, right, or the new set of items. So index two is going to be where the new items are. OK. 
Okay. So <clears throat> in this case, we can we can see uh, we actually don't want pears in there. We don't want cantaloupe in there. So we're going to remove one item. Start at index two. We're going to remove cantaloupe and then add cranberries. And this is the way that you can add and remove items of a list. And it does modify the list. Okay, so everything we've talked about so far modifies the contents of our original list. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about here is slices. Okay, so slices do not uh, modify the original array. And excuse me, I said I said lists before. I, we're talking about arrays in JavaScript. They're in a lot of ways they're very similar to Python lists, but uh, JavaScript arrays. Uh, it can be sliced um, and so basically what this does if you think of the array as a slice of bread so if we look here this this being the slice of bread so the zero slice is kind of here at the beginning and if I go from the zero slice and then take a slice at one what's left okay so you take the slices in between so that's sort of how slicing works if I want to take the elements of an array from here to here for example Right? I would take, this is the zero slice, so this is going to be the one slice. So I'm going to go from the one slice, and then that's two, and then three. So to the three slice. So the one slice to the three slice is going to return these slices in between, these elements in between those two slices. All right, so that's sort of how you can visualize it. Uh, so here, notice that fruits will not be modified. Okay, so let um, slices equal fruits dot slice okay so I want to slice starting from one uh, to three and I'm going to console dot log fruits and then I'll console dot log the slices Okay, so here from slice one to slice three is these items, and we see that's what's placed here. Now, if you leave, um, you can leave these arguments out. All right, if I take a slice with no arguments, that basically duplicates the list. Okay, one thing to demonstrate here is with JavaScript. Let, let's check to see if fruits is equal. Remember, you always use triple equal uh, if, if fruits is equal to uh, slices. False. Now, this is interesting. In different programming languages, this behavior would be different uh, depending on the language. So here, this is showing us that we, ha we do indeed have two lists. They have the same values inside of them, but the two lists are different, meaning these values are stored in memory in two separate places. So I, I can, to prove that, I, I can up here, um, let's change fruits, or let's change slices value, uh, the item at index one, or, or index zero, to um, apricots. Change it back to apricots, right? And then semicolon. Okay, so we have changed one of them, but not the other. So these lists are not the same, they just happen to have the same value. Okay, so it's important that you know when you're comparing lists uh, or arrays rather in, in JavaScript, uh, this triple equals operator is really only checking to see if they're the exact same list. It's not checking to see if they hold the same values. That's something if different. In Python, for example, uh, when you use the double equals operator, it's going to check to see if the lists are holding the same values, not whether or not they're the same list. In JavaScript, that's different. The, the, the triple equals is always checking to see if they're the exact same thing. Okay. So later, we're going to uh, make a function to check for uh, array equality, sort of like what Python would do to check to see if these arrays have the same values as opposed to being the exact same array. And so we'll make a function for that uh, in an upcoming video. All right. So back to slice. 
So you can take a slice with no arguments, and that's basically just going to duplicate the list. It's going to make a brand new list. All right? That's usually not very useful. You can specify a starting point. So I can just specify one of these items, the start. And so it's going to go from the two slice, um, so 0, 1, 2, to the end. So if you don't specify anything, it's just going to go to the end. So we can run this. So here's our, our original fruits, and we went from two to the end, and we get cranberries and dragon fruits. Okay, so that's good. And then we can also obviously specify both of them. Uh, one nice thing about slices as well is you can use negative indexing like you can in Python. So you could say go from the negative three index to the negative one index. Okay, so let's look at this and see where we think it might be. So if uh, this is the negative one index, negative two, negative three, this should be bananas to the negative ones, which is a bananas and cranberries, I believe. So we'll try that. And sure enough, we get bananas and cranberries. So that's kind of nice. You can use the negative indexing. All right. Now with pop, you can't use uh, indexing at all. And we're going to make a function later where we can use indexing with pop, and it will remove an item by the index. And we also need to, to, to show how to uh, remove an item based on where it's located. All right. Uh, so concatenation, uh, this is another operation for arrays. And let's say we have uh, another array of items, another array of fruits. So this is fruits too. So array con concatenation takes uh, a series of arguments, uh, one or more, and the argument you provide can either be just a value. If it's a value, each one of those items will be added to your original array, or it can be another array, right? So, and, and then the elements of that array will be added to your uh, original ar ar array. But then this does not modify the original array either. It returns a new separate array, okay? So let's take a look. We're gonna say let fruits three equal fruits, which is our original array, dot concat. And we're going to concat fruits two, and then also, which is an array, and then also we're going to concat honeydew, which is just a single item. All right, and we can see this console.log. Um, <clears throat> and we'll do fruits, and then fruits two, and then fruits three. So we, so we can see what modif take, uh, modifications took place. Right? So, okay, we run this. So we have dragon fruit, elderberries, figs, grapefruit, and then we also see honeydew was added because as an individual item. So with concatenate, you can add. Uh, arrays to the original array fruits uh, or individual values and notice it didn't change any of the the other arrays it created a new array and set that equal to that uh, we set that equal to that value that return value okay uh, so those are some basic operations oh there's let's see there's one more important one I need to mention before we wrap this one up uh, we need to talk about index of so if I want to find an item, uh, find an elements index. Okay, if I want to locate an elements index, there is a, a, a method for that, console.log. It's called index of, okay, and it takes um, an item and then an optional starting point. All right, and so what this does is uh, it searches the array for the first element, uh, for the first location 
index location of the element or item provided. Okay, So here, if I were to pass in cranberries into our fruits array, it would search that entire array for that item and return the index of it. Okay. And then optionally, you can provide a starting location because theoretically, you could have cranberries in your list multiple places, right? So you might want to find the second instance of cranberries, so you'd have to start after you found the first one. Okay, so uh, let's do this. We're going to say let uh, found index equal um, fruits. Let's do fruits three, right? That's the uh, the joined list. That's the big list of all our of our fruits. We're gonna say find uh, or uh, I'm sorry, index of and we want to find the index of um, let's say figs. So console dot log say fruits3 console.log found index okay so here's our combined list one, uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 so that is the value um, what if we did something like this found index equals fruits three dot index of and we're going to look for something that's not in there right um, so we'll say uh, we're going to look for a pair right console dot log found index okay so what happens when we look for something that's not there the return value is negative one so if you search an array for something and uh, the index of function or method cannot cannot find it in the array it returns a negative one value so whenever you see the negative one value right that means that that there was nothing found to match the item you were searching for okay now this it makes sense because uh, all the index values starting from zero they all have to be positive. Now, in a, in a programming language like Python, you can use negative indexing, and we can even use negative indexing in, in JavaScript here with the slice function. But negative one here, when it's returned from index of, that means not found. All right, so that's important. Um, and then, let's see, what else do we need to do? Index of, search for figs. Oh, the, the second instance. Okay, so let's go ahead and add um, figs again to the end. Uh, of our new list. So we're going to say fruits three. Uh, let's do this up here before we print it out. Dot push, and we're going to um, we're going to push in figs again. So we're going to have two two instances of figs. Okay. So then we're going to say console dot log, and um, oh, we need to find it. Okay. So this this first found index. Okay, so found index here is of figs, right? And then uh, we print out the list and the found index of fig figs. And then here I want to find another index. So I'm going to say found index. So this is going to be the second index of figs. So I want to start looking in fruits three, and I want to find the index of figs just the same right except where do I want to start well I want to start here at this the, the last location where I found one plus one index of or I'm sorry uh, found index plus one okay now remember everything that occurs here on the right hand side of the um, uh, assignment expression or assi assignment statement. Everything here is an expression. And this will be evaluated before 
this value is set. Okay, so when I reference found index in here, that's this old version of found index. We've not yet set a new value. We can't possibly have set a new value because we don't know what it is yet. This has to be evaluated to a value, which means we have to use the old value first to get this value and then store it in found index. So that's important. Whatever expression is on the, the right hand side of an ass assignment statement is always going to reference the old value of a variable even if you're, you're setting it equal setting that variable as, as the variable you're assigning right so this is always the older value from from previous calculations right. and so then here we're gonna log out um, found index okay so we're gonna find the first index of figs it's gonna be found index then we're gonna start searching at found index plus one for figs again and then we'll print it out So we found figs at 5, and then we start the search at 6, 7, and 8. Now if we just left this at found index, we'd start the search at 5, and it would find it right away at 5. Okay, so we started the search at 5, and then it found, found it at 5 again, right? That's why we have to have the plus 1 here. Okay, so these are the basic operations of arrays, very important. We're going to do uh, another video and do a few uh, helper functions that are going to help us understand them a little bit more. Okay, so I'll scroll through all this uh, one more time. We got push and pop. Remember, they operate on the end of the list. Uh, the shorter one uh, makes the list shorter. The longer one makes the list longer. We have shift and unshift. They uh, operate on the beginning of the list. Uh, the shorter one makes the list shorter. The longer one makes the list longer. Uh, we have splice, so that takes in an index to start at, how many items you want to remove, and then as many arguments as you want to add items um, to that list. And, and these all do modify the original list. Then we get to slices. Slices does not modify the original list. You can use negative slices, uh, or negative slice values, right? And uh, it returns a new list uh, of those items the slices or the items in between those slices. Uh, concatenation, you can concat uh, an array or a value, right? And then we used, uh, we could find uh, an elements index using index of, okay? And optionally include a starting place. All right, so those are your basic array operations.